It is the Sports Lounge. It is number 239. Marcus Traxler from Crookston is here. David Schottenkirk from Brainerd is here. Trildy Hildebrand from, uh, uh, where, where are you from? Pick a, pick a random town in northwest Iowa. A Warden. A Warden, Iowa. <laughs> Doing it up. Big. It's Royal Rumble Sunday, so it's very exciting. It's North Carolina State Sunday as well. All very exciting here. But first, uh, Marcus, let's start with Michigan State because they've been in the news uh, for, mm -hmm. for not good reasons. Uh, why why does stuff like this continue to happen? Baylor, Penn State, and now you can add them to the list where it's it's a decades-old problem and uh, people reading some of it, people just didn't believe the victims for literally two decades and now all of a sudden uh, something's finally being done. Why, why do people not believe these these people after all these years? I mean, I think that's part of it. I think the other part is that you know, it's financially important for these universities to protect their ass. And that's why um, they they seem to let these things go on and on. And, you know, Dan, Mark D'Antonio and Tom Izzo are certainly uh, worth whatever they're paid to Michigan State. And so um, I don't know at what point they get to a critical mass, mass uh, position where they got to make a change. I think it, it may be coming here based on the reporting we've seen this last week. Um, it just doesn't make sense about Larry, the Larry Nasser thing, as far as it pertains to Michigan state, because there's certainly, um, I would say hundreds of doctors that are well qualified enough to be in his position. And for some reason they, you know, USA gymnastics and Michigan state stuck with him for just an insane amount of time and allowed this to happen. And, you know, there's been the reporting about, you know, instead of ways Mark Emmert knew, you know, about 30 some assaults didn't do anything since 2010. It's just, there's, everybody's got to protect their ass, and that's why nothing uh, appears to happen. The, the money thing is always uh, the number one thing, no matter what we're talking about. But with, what with uh, Larry Nassar, there was a lot of you know, female sports, and those aren't making much money. So then, and, I, and I'm reading stories about 12-year-old, uh, you know, 14-year-old, 18-year-old girl telling her parents what happened, and they don't believe her over this guy, which I find amazing uh, that you wouldn't believe your own child. Nope, I believe this doctor because he's supposed to be some some great doctor. Uh, Schottenkirk, I believe that, when I mean, you look at Penn State, the, the, the penalties were not all that stiff. Uh, Baylor, I mean, there's really nothing that's been done there. You're, you know, your AD, your president, some head coaches are going to get fired. But as far as penalties, there's not hasn't been huge. I mean, Reggie Bush has gotten penalized more for what he did than, than Penn State and all these other schools. Is that a reason why the penalty is is not going to be there? Even, no, Nothing's going to happen at Michigan State. The AD's gone. The president's gone. Uh, they may need a new football coach. That's it. I mean, there's nothing else. So, so why not continue to cover this up? Because it's been shown once this is uncovered, there's really not much consequences besides a few jobs lost. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, to be honest, basically cover it all. There is, there's no point because even if it does come out, the consequence is what it is. You're not going to get, uh, you know, retroactively. You can't go back and change things. But it just makes you wonder how many we we found out in these last couple of years in particular. How many more stories that there are? And how many? How, uh, how many more in the pipeline are there that are to come out? Because if anybody thinks that this is the end, it's it's just the next one. I'm sure there's going to be another one. Here in the next few months, and it just uh, it seems to intensify the search for stories like this every time that they do come out with one. And this one with the NCAA, with the NCAA twist, with the uh, Emmert involvement is just just mind-boggling to me. And I've got a whole separate tangent that it really it's probably not the time or the place. But it, uh, the NCAA as a whole, we've talked about it at length before, and might discourage other people involved. But it's it's dead and it's been dead for a while it's just it's a running joke for me at, at this at this point charlie the the ncaa part of this i mean where do they fit in does mark emrit does he does any way that he uh lasts the next couple of weeks here or or not 
I mean, it seems tough. It feels something like this. Like, I don't know how the guy in charge of the NCAA as a whole, who's supposed to be overseeing all this stuff, can just be like, oh, yeah, well, he knew about this eight years, seven years ago or whatever, and that's fine. I mean, like, I just I don't see how that flies where he's still going to be the president for a whole lot longer. I mean, I would, I would, I would assume he's going to be, I, I don't know how it works in terms of, like if there's some agency, like I don't think there's a board of directors yeah. of the NCAA, so I think he'll just be, I guess, resign instead of getting fired by by uh, the outcries of people yelling for that. But I, just, I, I don't know how he's going to keep his job, and I, I don't know. Like we could debate whether Izzo is going to keep his job, Tom Izzo. I don't know. I don't know how D'Antonio is going to be able to keep his job, assuming all the things stated about Michigan State and the football team are accurate. I mean, if they are, I don't know how, I mean, what it was like since 2007, there have been like 17 of them that Mm -hmm. were covered up. And then I think last year they kicked a few guys off the team for sexual assault or something. And D'Antonio basically said like, well, this is the first time this has ever happened. So we're going to come down hard on this now. And it's just like, I don't, I don't know how he's going to be able to keep his job. This scene, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's bad. Marcus, he says he denies all of this. You know, he's like, oh, nothing's ever happened, and uh, it, it doesn't seem good. He's just he's lying. I mean, there's just no – it's that simple. There's no way uh, they tell the truth there. I think that's a, that's one way to expedite that you're going to be out the door. Um, you know, two, two other points I had sort of circling back to what's been said. One, regarding Michigan State, you know, ESPN's reporting has shown that – and they've done this for a few years now, you know – digging into police reports at college campuses in Michigan State, a public university, sued to keep ESPN from from getting access to any of that. I mean, to me, that just shows that they had something to cover up, uh, that they had something to hide. And then back to the gymnastics point, you know, you said that you didn't understand how uh, the, gym, the gymnast parents wouldn't believe the gymnast. And I, I would agree with you for, to some extent, but when you think about USA Gymnastics and how difficult it is to get to the top, you know, potentially being the Olympics, you're one of, you know, 15, 20 elite gymnasts in the world, and that team's whittled down to five or seven uh, each Olympic round. I mean, if you're putting in the money for your kid, and I mean, this isn't sort of excusing any of that behavior from the parents not believing their kids, but it's just like, you know, you're, you don't want to jeopardize your spot, and that's what USA Gymnastics was doing, is just sort of holding this over people's heads and, uh, you know, if you don't want to upset the apple cart, otherwise you'll be out. It does say a lot that they don't want to upset things when they're when they when there's no blame. I mean, they it's like they're in the wrong for speaking up. Right. That's that's amazing that you know somebody rapes you or somebody touches you inappropriately, and you say this happened to me, then you are the one that's looked at as the bad person. That's quite a quite a deal right there. So Michigan State, they're playing basketball today. They uh, they were getting their ass kicked at uh, Maryland. Hopefully uh, now they finally what just took the lead. Uh, does this make you a shot in Kirk? Does this make you root against Michigan State? Something like just because of this? No. It, uh, it probably should more. I mean, I don't think Izzo had much involvement with everything that went on and I've been an ISO guy so as far as Michigan State basketball unless I get proven wrong and somebody else comes out I think I'm always going to be kind of a closet Michigan State fan and hope that they do well but... what do yeah you I would say the record you know just the, the number of four, uh, football guys points to D'Antonio losing his job there certainly have been incidents a couple a handful um, at uh, in the basketball program but I found being completely honest I mean the Gophers have had more than that in the last uh, five years. I mean, we should be talking about Patino losing his job if uh, if we're going to talk about Izzo losing his job. Do you think he will? Patino? Yep. Whether it's I because th- the team's not good or because all this other stuff. I mean, I think if this other stuff doesn't go away, he's going to lose his job. I mean, I honestly don't think it's even so much about the team. I mean, they've had some things this year that have, have gone sideways on them. But um, I, I have a feeling this isn't going to go away. I don't know the timeline or anything, but I just feel like he's not going to be able to get out from underneath this. 
frankly, his last name isn't going to help him in this scenario, considering his dad, uh, you know, basically cheats at every at every stage. It's just uh, that it's going to be tough. I think he's going to have a hard time keeping his job. As far as basketball is concerned, you have uh, Villanova and Marquette playing right now. Very good game. You had Virginia beat Duke yesterday in a, I don't know if I call it a good game. It was an interesting game. It was game. a close game. It was a close <laughs> game. It wasn't, uh, first half, what was it, wasn't great. Um, it was a good game by Virginia standards, for sure. They, I mean, there was over 120 points scored, so that was, that was fun to watch. Uh, Charlie, we've got, we've got Purdue, we've got Virginia, we've got Villanova. I don't know if we talked about this a week or so ago, but teams that usually disappoint, and it's been a weird college basketball year, uh, where there's been a lot of teams, uh, ranked getting beat. Doesn't seem like there's one dominant team. Seems like every team has flaws, and if there are dominant teams, it might be those three that I mentioned. So uh, as as you get into college uh, basketball now, as you get into February, uh, where does your confidence level with Virginia, Villanova, and Purdue rank? I mean, not not really high for those three. I mean, certainly for winning a lot of games between now and the conference tournaments, I'm sure they will all do quite well. But it just seems like with all of them, I've been stung so many times in the past. V- Virginia more than anybody else that. I don't know. No, to me, nothing would seem more fitting than for Virginia to win the ACC, win the ACC conference tournament, have a one seed, and then lose in the first round, like fifty-one to forty-eight to a sixteen seed. Like I think it's safe to assume that's not going to happen. But like I don't think I'm, I'm not I'm not having Virginia or Villanova make it out of the opening weekend, mm. and probably not Purdue either. And I, I will, I will like take the gamble of being wrong and having to go to the Sweet Sixteen or the Elite Eight, just based off of so many times all three of those teams, especially Virginia, being like, "All right, Final Four. and it's like, "Oh nope, lost in the second round again." Noted Virginia fan and Nova fan, Schottenkirk. Uh, why is basket? Why is college basketball been the way it's been this year? Where there's you know a lot of people like Duke, and Duke's definitely uh, very fun to watch. And uh, Villanova's smoking folks, but uh, why? Why has it been the way it has been? It's the one and done. It's a byproduct of one and done. And this is one of the random years where there's not a whole lot of senior-laden teams at the top. You know, you know, Kansas is probably the most experienced team of the of the blue bloods, and they've had their struggles at home this year. Those are clear things out. But Duke's consists of five freshmen. They only played seven guys. They had, I think, a total of six. Minutes off the bench has to be the lowest in Division One, which is oh, you can't criticize Coach K. But if you're going to criticize Coach K, he did not do that team any favors yesterday. There's no reason they shouldn't have came back in the second half and won. At, uh, but Young, look at Kentucky; they had a big win last night at West Virginia. Big comeback in the second half. You, you look at it, there's just not you know, Miles Bridges at Michigan State. Everyone thought, well, they should be really good. They've had their struggles, their own issues, including today. A couple injuries with Villanova throws them a, 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 you know, a wrench into things for them. But as far as Purdue, Virginia, Villanova and being let down, I can totally agree. And it's been the case for me, too. But two years ago, Villanova won the title. And get on, get on the wagon. Here we go. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I should have noted that Villanova did win the national title. They did something. At least they did so, something. So they at least did it for the one time. They did do it. And right now, right now if I had They'd to be the favorite. choose. My, it, the most talented team, without question, if they play their A game, should win the title. Is still Duke, even after the third loss in conference play uh, against a really good team. Again, they probably could have won, should have won. Uh, they're figuring things out. They're going to be fine. All things considered, the chips down in, in March. I'll ride with them until something changes. But my second favorite to win the whole thing right now is probably Purdue, and that scares the shit. Purdue, out. holy shit. Marcus, we talked about how big the how bad the big is last week. They might only get four teams in. Uh, do you want one show? of them might be Nebraska. Holy yeah. fuck! Look at Nebraska come up here. Uh, you've got uh, Virginia Duke. You see a little bit of that one. Uh, I was surprised Duke. Like you looked at that game when Duke had like ten points, ten minutes in. You're like, well, this is a Virginia game right here. Then Duke goes on a bit of a run second half, but then Virginia comes back, uh, actually scored some points. 
So uh, I guess I was surprised that Duke didn't win and didn't win by like 10 points. Yeah, similarly, I thought that, you know, when Duke made that run in the second half, that would maybe be the point where they could take control. But um, kind of like David they mentioned, got they, tired. they got tired. They had no depth, for Christ's sake. And, and uh, you know, the youth, Defense I think, sucks. just kind of shows through. I mean, um, I kind of mentioned it yesterday that, you know, Trayvon Duval was everybody's guy last year, and now he's not really the guy at all. Uh, he's, he's, he's struggled some. Didn't he, what so, did he change his last name or we were just pronouncing it? Duval, or how was, how, how was he, uh, he did something with his last name. Yeah, he wanted to change how it was pronounced. I'm not, uh, We're doing not Duval. Anymore. We're doing it. Um, he, I will give Virginia some credit. Uh, cre- I don't, I, I don't like doing this, but they had some skilled offensive players make some plays down the stretch. So, uh, they earned that win. And if they're able to, you know, do that at all in March, they'll be a tough team to get out of there. Um, but I would still bank on, yeah, like Charlie said, maybe that, that second round, uh, Virginia and being out. I, I would also believe in Villanova a little bit more than, uh, than your other teams. I honestly have not seen a ton of Purdue play this year, uh, whether that's just the, the timing of the games or whatever. But um, people say they're good. They've got a good program. They just have never really been able to put it all together in March. And um, I would I would probably err on the side of them not making the Final Four, just based on history. But things change, so – Besides me, was anyone else's favorite part of that Duke Virginia game when oh, yes. Grayson Allen got yes. elbowed in the face? Yes. And then it was like, oh my God, you can't do that. That's a penalty. And it's like, that's right, Grayson, because we know that you always play by the rules God, perfectly and have never done anything like that before. Just his face. Just that fucking face. My God. I, I like you guys, that. You guys, you guys definitely know what this is setting up to, right? He's going to have his senior struggle and he's having all of his issues throughout the couple of years. Yeah. He's going to hit a shot to win him a title. Like, has he, gotten, like has he gotten worse? I can definitely see that happening. He's a piece of shit. Has he, like, gotten worse? No, he's he's just gotten passive. He hasn't gotten worse. He's just Or there's better players. In. He's not the best player. Maybe he used to be, like, their, their number one or right. two option. Now he's maybe, like, their three or four option. He's distinctly probably the third option, and on some nights the fourth option. He's not used to it. And if he figures out how to play as the third or fourth option, that team is going to be deadly. But he hasn't, and he cost him the game yesterday. But on top of uh, not playing, not getting any production off the bench because Coach Gay decided to do what he did. But yeah, I would, I would, you know, on the note of the elbow, it was kind of interesting that um, one of the better combinations out there, Iron Eagle, Bill Raftery, they noted, you know, you stick your head into somebody's face and you get elbowed. There's, they're not, they don't have to call that. They you know, fuck you, just, buddy. You put your head in there and you get hit like that. That's what happens. So I, you know, I think he just kind of assumed that, well, I should get it, get the call because I got elbowed. That's not how it works. There's so, some, I should get the call because I go to Duke. Yeah. You're a bitch. The, there's, uh, there's some guy in this Maryland team, look like a player with a hoodie on, has a turnover like chain around his goddamn neck here. <laughs> what a Sean Kirk. Uh, I was just going to note that you were circling back to all the uh, top ten teams and seemingly all the combined losses, whatever, but there was a stat yesterday that through this point of the season, there hasn't been this many losses from teams ranked at the time in the top ten, I think in like 40-some years. So it it has been kind of the tops of the the year, which leads to the intrigue is that you still, you know, you're going to have the schools that are always around, but you're going to have – Seemingly leading up to a pretty crazy tournament. I know we've been saying this for a number of years in a row that the tournament seems wide open, but the, for me personally, at this time of year, I kind of have my title contenders whittled down to four, five, or six. And I think I told Marcus a couple of days ago I'm still at nine teams that I still have penciled in as legit title contenders, and that's pretty rare for me. Like you just, so look- I'm just setting up a magical run for Stackins, Wichita State Woo Shockers. <laughs> oh, he's back on the wagon this year. Uh, you just look at a at a projected bracket, and I just have a hard time thinking. All right, if it's not going to be these one seeds, who who is it going to be? Is Ohio State? Are they they a legitimate team? I love my Xavier squad. I'll probably take Xavier uh, quite a ways. I do like uh, Wichita State. Clemson's a four seed for Christ's sake. Uh, Tennessee is a five. You've got uh, Clemson's dangerous, just as an FYI, in my opinion. They, I saw them against uh, NC State. That was an awfully good game uh, a week or so ago. I mean, you got Arizona. 
a bad start. They've uh, they're getting by. They play some close fucking games where they they should all by all means win by more than than they do. And Kentucky's been uh, just same old story. A lot of young guys that have not looked good at times. Uh, first half of West Virginia getting their doors blown off, and the second half is is the complete opposite. So. I mean, Kansas uh, has been disappointing. Now they're they're going to win the Big 12 again. Uh, Big 12's got a bunch of teams. Uh, Oklahoma's exciting. Uh, Cincinnati's a three seed. So it's uh, a lot of teams are in the mix right there. You look at the uh, the local club, Marcus. You look at SDSU. They shoot a lot of threes. And uh, is that all it comes down to, basically, if they're making... Uh, 40% they're going to win. If they're making maybe 25%, that's not looking so. Is that a good strategy to have? I don't mind it with the personnel they have because you got Dom, you got Tom Hughes, and you got Jenkins. Uh, they're all good three point shooters. Um, they're capable of scoring a lot, but their defense, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's still a concern, I would say, the way it's going right now. But I don't mind the three pointers. Um, not to sound too much like Otzenberger, but he did say that. You know, it's not so much shooting all those threes, but they have to be, they have to make Good. sense. I mean, they have to be kind of in, in the rhythm of the offense and that sort of thing and not just run down there and chucking one up. So they had the, the disappointing loss at USD. I, I felt like they should have been at least competitive in that game in the second half, and it didn't happen. Um, you have to give Matt Mooney at USD a lot of credit. He's good. Um, but USD then went and, and blew it uh, at Denver on Saturday. So, um I think it, you know, I would just cut to the chase and say it'll be SCC, USD, should be uh, those two. Men and women. Yeah, so. My my outside, somewhat outside view, I haven't followed as closely as I have last year, as I still watch quite a bit, but are the, should the men or women be more concerned about USD down the line? The men. I think it's probably the men for sure. It's probably a stupid hypothetical question, but we, you know, seemingly, Women should Every, get in at an at large. Yeah. A, yeah absolutely. Crap absolutely. Crap. But the uh, uh, the hypothetical matchup, is there any more, <laughs> any better year or nope. any more of a, almost a certainty that we might get finally get the two USD SDSU final games? Because there's nobody else that scares me in Super Bowl. Women's side, no. Men's side, um, you know, SDSU's been prone to shit their pants uh, maybe yeah. once in a while. Uh, I don't but know. I feel like it's, I feel like it's like seventy five percent that we're gonna get a full final yeah. games being the South I would, I would agree. Yeah, I, I think um, the big thing is that you know, NDSU's out there. I think what Denver did to USD at least should have them on the radar. But I feel like it will be it'll be those two in state programs for the big titles on Tuesday. <laughs> That's what people want to see. Um. It'll be exciting. I, I hope that's what we get. I think, I think this could be a good summer league tournament, just because after you know those first couple teams, everybody else is, is fairly even or you know interesting enough to, to play against. So we could have a few upsets in the early rounds as well. And hashtag stacking its rating stocks. I don't know about television, but the matchup that the Summit League and that uh, Sioux Falls would certainly be one would be both South Dakota schools playing in the title game. The, the, the men, Charlie, what's what's an update on your status a month from now? Um, depends. Fluid still because Ooh. possible trending towards more likely than not likely, but not dramatically. So, when do tickets go on sale? I think there are. I think there. You can buy them now, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, I'll probably buy them later this afternoon. Then. Well, there we go. Well, this would be the the third that they the men have met two years in a row, right? Two or three years in a row. Last year's game was was a classic game. It two was, years ago, it was in the were last year's in the semis, and then they meet in the quarters. The first no, year. two years ago, I think it was also in the semis, but it was just a complete drubbing, yeah. like a twenty five point point uh, loss for USD. So, a uh, championship game would be uh, would be the whole thing. Seems like it gets better and better somehow uh, every year. Um, and the women losing last year, they you know they can bounce back and 
Uh, you were at the game. What I mean, what did, was USD better than you thought? I mean, it didn't look like SDSU played very well. Like they had a very poor performance yet. Should have won at the end. Yeah, I agree. I mean, SDSU did not play very sharp. I think if they uh, play even a little bit better, they win that game. I uh, couldn't get a lot of outside shots to go when they needed them. Um, I wrote for the paper on Saturday that I mean, they, they just have to be a team that's more than Miller and Gieber. And then they had Thompson, you know, have a huge game on Saturday against uh, and So I think if they can kind of get everybody involved and be somewhat balanced, I, I just can't see anybody staying with them. I have a feeling SDC is going to go down to USC and win that game. Uh, USC was good. Good defensive team. Uh, you know, their, their main thing is that they can play basically five guards, five um, you know, their living house is six foot and she's pretty athletic. So that's a matchup problem, breast issue. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun to watch just to see because um, I think we're going to get that matchup uh, two more times. Got a trivia question. I don't want to say it's the best trivia question ever, but I think it's pretty good. Uh, Shot and Kirk, you're Yes, draw. Hashtag third best trivia question ever. <laughs> Okay. Third best ever? Before we get to trivia, I just have a personal shout out to my my man, Jalen Brunts from Villanova. He's not as flashy as some of the other top guys, elite guys, but I don't think there's any been anybody that has improved and developed as much as he has under Jay Wright, and he's had some damn good guards there. He's got almost 30 right now at Marquette. First game without Phil Booth, one of their important uh, contributors, and if they can get this win, that's probably good signs that they're able to tread water until he comes back in March and he's going to be dangerous again, but he's just so, he looks like he's on cruise control, but he's just so damn good. Anyway. I don't hate Villanova this year. They look to be very good, so I don't hate them out of well, we'll see what they do in the tournament, but uh, I don't hate them as much as I did. And they, they got big sister too, which is a stark to contrast for the last couple years. Good team. Uh, Shot and Kirk, your thoughts on Cleveland? It seems like this is an every year thing uh, with the LeBron team. Um, I'm not, I'm none too concerned about whatever ails them. Even if, even if their defense does not improve, I, I mean, it's them in Boston. Um, is this the likeliest of this run that somebody could knock off LeBron before the finals? Uh. Come back to me after the trade deadline. And okay. I say what 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 what, uh, what are your expectations there? I would be pretty surprised if they don't get DeAndre Jordan. That'd be a good that'd be a good thing. Yeah, then I'll then I'll shore up the defense quite a bit in a quick hurry. And hot take before Cousins blew it as Achilles Friday night. I oh think boy. there was a legit possibility that they could have went went after Cousins, but mm. involving next year's number one pick and So you get else. rid of that pick. If, it, if I could have got Cousins for it, if he stayed healthy, in a heartbeat. Because if you if you trade for cut, you trade that number one and something else for Cousins, you're ensuring that LeBron's not leaving after this year. You think he'll in stay? My opinion, okay. In my opinion, but at this point, you know, if they get the Andre and it doesn't go well, he might say see ya. But we'll see. But yeah, I think to answer the question, they probably are the most vulnerable to knock it out of the East. But I'd still be very surprised if they don't. Marcus had some baseball things happen. Sure did. The Brewers got some guys. Lorenzo Cain went five for eighty. They traded for Kristen Yelich. Uh, they've got a, they got a boatload of outfielders anyway. Now they've got more outfielders. Everybody seems to like these moves. They could use some pitchers as well, so they can move some of those outfielders now for some pitchers. Uh, Cubs seem to be uh, still good, but uh, not a World Series favorite. And the Cardinals, they seem improved as well. They added uh, Marlins outfielder Ozuna, so they've they've added some guys. Uh, the the Brewers is for me. This is what I wish the Twins would do, but they've never done this. The Brewers, similar like the Twins, uh, they're actually going for something here. Yeah, I think the Brewers kind of look at it and see that they've got an opening, like you said, in the NL Central, where the Cubs are still good, but maybe not as good as they've been. Cardinals. Uh, they may have the edge over now, just based on the moves they've made. Um, I don't know exactly how they'll figure it all out because you got to 
you know, find spots for those two guys. I would assume that Braun probably moves to first base, right, at some point. So yeah. it's, a, uh... it's an interesting situation for them to try to juggle this lineup. And I, I sort of read that they may try to do, you know, different lineups for going against lefties and righties. So they got some things they got to juggle. Like you said, they, they probably have a move or two still to make. But um, it's interesting. I mean, I'm glad something happened uh, because it seemed like we were going along with without anything. So... And uh, nothing, nothing continues to happen. Kane, he was the first noted position player to sign, and nothing's going on. So it is interesting. I listened to the the twenty eighty baseball podcast uh, yesterday. Um, you know, it, it would seem that maybe the Royals are going to end up with a few of their guys back. Uh, then they should trade them, them immediately because that's a waste of fucking time and money, and uh, it's stupid. It is stupid, and I, I don't know why they didn't trade him to begin, you know, to begin with. So that's something I think to watch for sure. See what happens there. Just shit. Just complete shit. You ready for this trivia question? Wait, real, real quick on baseball, Corinne. Yes. And if you don't want to talk about this, you don't. Have oh, to. we'll I talk about it. it. Was either it was, I think it was yesterday. I saw you either liked or retweeted something on Twitter from. Uh, the ESPN dude about signing a hundred million dollar players in baseball. Mm -hmm. And just, if you had any thoughts on that, which I thought, I I mean, I, I, I've heard of it in like other sports. I'd never heard it specifically spelled out that way in baseball, but I mean, it makes, it made sense to me at least that you don't want to be giving guys huge contracts in the back end of their careers and think this is going to be the guy that it's going to work for. Because there's so many bad Deals. I mean, you look at Detroit. You look at uh, Miguel Cabrera's got many years left. Uh, Verlander's turned it around, so that doesn't look nearly as bad. Um, there's so many. I mean, there's no reason to give a guy a long contract. There's no reason to be paying a guy twenty, twenty-five million after he's in his mid-thirties. And now you've got a lot of guys like like a Hosmer. Uh, I don't think he's any good. And he's looking for a big money deal. I, I just don't think there's anybody that needs really a first baseman. There's not a lot of need for him. There's not a lot a lot of need for a, a third baseman like Moustakis. There's, you know, J.D. Martinez seems to be going to Boston uh, for five years, $125 million seems to be the rumor. But, yeah, there's there's no reason. Like, five-year five, five year, I mean, there's five-year deals seem to be the maximum. But then we'll get to next year and we'll see. Bryce Harper get a 10-year deal for $400 million, and we'll see uh, Machado get a 10-year deal for $350 million. So, uh, yeah, not not good to give. If it's a, you know, a five-year deal for 120-something, it's not bad. But as far as, like, anything over seven, eight years, that just doesn't work out. Is that for anyone, period, or just once they've reached, like, like guys like 30, age? yeah. Once you're yeah. once you're paying a guy past 34, 35, then that's you know they should not be good by that time. It's very weird with baseball because your first four or five years you don't make any money, and you can be very good, but then after that you probably make too much money, and they and you're overpaid. So it's very unbalanced the way uh, the way the money works. You're not paid. Like coaches in college football. Yeah, you're not paid <laughs> much when you're pretty good. You're paid way too much when you're way past your prime. So it's it's a big imbalance that way right there. All righty, we got a qu- yeah. Before before I got one, before we get this traded, not the I'm gonna pull a stack in here. I said that Purdue might be my second favorite team to win the title right now, but. I will not. You wouldn't be surprised, be surprised if. Give me Arizona. If, Give me Arizona. I would, I would. Yeah, that's a good one too. I wouldn't be surprised if Purdue lost today at Indiana. So no, that point. There's two Marcuses here. Is that a, is there a reason why there's two Marcuses? My internet just completely died for a minute there, so I left and came back, and I don't know if that other one's going to go away or not. But okay, here we are. So. Here we are, folks. Got Charlie. We got Marcus. Got Shot and Kirk. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, we can go six times around here. There's 20 questions. Six times around. 
Since the merger, Marcus. We're going since the merger. Oh, boy. 1970. I need you to name one of the top 20 career passing touchdown leaders since then. Okay. Okay. Then when you do that, you then unlock another question in which you have to give me the top five guys they threw touchdown passes to. Wow. Oh boy. So if I say... So, if I, third, yes. Go ahead. So if I say Michael Jordan, like, yes, Michael Jordan was one of the top 20 in career touchdowns over the past 50 years. Then you say, all right, Michael Jordan in his top five was Pippen, Rodman, uh, Bill Cartwright, and Folk. So, yeah. any questions as far as that goes? Is this for total or by season? Total in their career. So if there's a guy that played for multiple teams, we'll maybe take some guys from uh, the Pistons, maybe some guys from uh, Georgia Tech, whatever the hell. And I will give everybody one strike for every question. So if you, you know, you, you guess John Smoltz and you're going through the list and you guess a guy not on his top five because some of these top fives can be obscure, I will give you yeah. one Every time, I will give you one wrong answer, uh, one mulligan every time. Then we will go based on total points. You get a point for the quarterback. You get a point for every uh, receiver you say. Receiver, running back, tight end, punter, kicker, whoever you threw touchdowns to. If they threw enough interceptions, do defenders count? Mm, bottles, 10, uh, ten uh, touchdowns to 10 teams. <laughs> I suppose so. If they threw... Uh, 30 interceptions to Charles Woodson. He ran them all back. <laughs> I would accept. So Charlie Hildebrand, you started off the last, uh, since 1970, so about, what, 50 years? Uh, quarterbacks, most career touchdown passes since 1970 in the NFL. There's a few guys I could name who definitely would be their number one. I think the guy who I could name the most after Ooh, number one God damn would be... Uh, all right. Peyton, Man Peyton Manning. Oh, man. Give me a goddamn pen that works. Charlie Marcus David. Fuck. All right, Peyton Manning would be uh, number one on this list. Really? Uh, yeah. He's thrown for 539 touchdowns. Nobody's thrown for more. He has the most of anybody. Uh, so, again, you get one wrong answer per time. Uh, one mulligan. So uh, top five, Charlie. You got one point thus far. Any I'm other? Go. Any other folks? Reg Reggie Wayne. Reggie Wayne is number two. He's sixty-seven. Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison is number one. One hundred twelve. Dallas Clark. Dallas Clark's number three. Two more. So wait, what numbers were those guys? One, two, and three. One, two, and three. All right, so for four and five, this might be harder. Dallas Clark caught 44 touchdowns. Let's try Brandon Stokely. Stokely not on my list. Okay, so uh, I don't think he was at Denver long enough that, well, maybe he was. Um... Now I'm just trying to think of anyone else who caught a decent amount. And I'm blanking on everyone from the Broncos' name right now. Um, I don't know. I'll say Joseph Adai. Joe Adai, not on my list. So you get uh, one point for the quarterback, three at the top three, a total of four. Uh, any, any takers out there? Nobody. The Bron who is the guy? I don't know. I think he played collegiately at Georgia Tech. Was there a guy from the Broncos on the list? Demarius, Demarius Thomas. Demarius, Demarius Thomas. Thomas. That's what I was thinking of. Is for, he on the list? For Georgia Tech, yes. He's number four. And Damn it. Marcus, I could not think of his name. Marcus Pollard is number five. Oh, wow. Holy fuck. thought of that fuck. name in a decade. Going to be a lot of Marcus Pollards out there, folks. Marcus. Good. Good. M Traxler DDS. DDS. You're our next uh, contestant. Uh, name that fuck. 
I will uh, say Tom Brady. Tom Brady is on the list. He is at number four on this list. You get a point for Tom Brady. Okay. Name me five of the Brady guys. Uh, Rob Gronkowski. Gronkowski's one. 75. Wes Welker. Wes Welker's number three with 37. Or 34. Edelman. Edelman is five with 24. Two to go. Uh, Randy Moss. Randy Moss is number two with 39. One more to go. Two chances to get it. Marquette and Villanova is a very good basketball game. It's good. The hoops it's are good. Great game. All the points. points. Give me points. Good. Give me I'm points. I'm glad I switched to this game instead of Maryland, Michigan Give State. There's way more points here. Points, shots, make the shots, score the points. I will Dude. guess this person because I know he was a Super Bowl MVP and I just watched the thing on NFL Films this morning yes. from when the Eagles and the Patriots played the first time. You're son of a bitch, Marcus. You're son I'll of a bitch. I'll say Dion, Dion Branch. Yep, he would be uh, tied with Julian Edelman. So you got all oh. six points. A sweep for Marcus. We go to Schottenkirk. Brady was one of the first ones I thought of, and I was like, other than Gronkowski, I don't who know knows? who else it would have been because he cycled through so many guys. And then Traxler just got all of them. Bunch of white guys. Uh, how about Drew Brees? Drew Brees! Drew Brees! That's a good one. That's a good one. Number three on my list, Drew Brees. You get a point. I'm sure I can get more than three of them. For the man with the uh, thing on his face. Uh, who do you got for Drew Brees? Uh, Jimmy Graham. Jim Graham is number two. <laughs> at 51. Uh, Marquise Colston. Marquise Colston is number one. Good. And this is where it kind of gets tricky because it kind of falls off the map, I think. Um, well, Lance Moore because he's around forever. Lance Moore's third with 38 touchdowns. Take a shot and say Michael Thomas starting number five. Michael Thomas not on my list. He will be though, I would assume, pretty soon. How many does he yeah? yeah. Twenty something, I think. Let's see how many. He's been there two years. Yeah. Let's take a gander. Mm, I don't believe so. Let's see. Mm, no. One more guess. It's kind of fascinating. You think about it, the lack of big name receivers, but all. Robert Meacham probably played with him for five years, maybe. Yeah. Bob Meacham on my list. Bob. Yes, one more. Still got one more. Uh, yeah. Fuck. Reggie Bush just getting his call with 10 million here. Antonio Gates. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chargers. Mm. What an idiot, huh? That would have been tough. That was a tough one. Marcus got six, David got five, Charlie got four. Charlie, you're up. I'm going to try Dan Marino. Dan, this is, I mean, this, I took, I mean, this is, you're a Dolphins guy, so you probably know more than me. So, uh, There's only three names I think of that could be on there. And then after that, I'm going to be, like, naming obscure guys from Madden 64 that I remember from playing that all the time as a sixth grader. Okay, let's try uh, Mark Duper. Mark Duper, number two on my list. The Duper. Let's also try Mark Clayton. Mark Clayton would be one, 79 touchdowns. Let's try O.J. McDuffie. What's the O.J. stand for? Um, Same as O.J. Simpson? I, Orenthal James, I would assume. <laughs> Orenthal Jonathan McDuffie's number three at 25. 
So those were the three that I figured it'd have to be on there, and then now I'm just completely stabbing in the dark. Let's try... Uh, Pun not intended with the OJ reference. Stabbing that's in the true. dark. That's not, completely unintended. Um, Stabby, stab, stab. Let's try a guy who was a tight end and he shared a name with a recently deceased announcer. Let's go with uh, Keith Jackson. Ooh, good guess. Not on my list. Okay. And now I'm just trying to remember who else. Mm. I'm literally trying to remember the Madden 64 roster because that's how I thought of OJ McDuffie first. <laughs> Probably not the running back Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because he wasn't any good. <laughs> so I don't want to guess him. But I'm struggling to think of anybody else. Honestly, I've never heard of these two guys. Let's, uh, I think this guy was hurt, but he was actually a receiver instead of a running back. I'll go with, uh, Kareem Dardar. Somebody named Nate Moore? Nat Moore? I've heard of the name, but I think he was before I cared about football. He was like an 80s guy, I like think. 74 to 86, he had 24, and some guy named Jim Jensen through the Never 80s. even heard of him before. Neither I'm surprised Jeremy Fryer isn't on that list. I was as well. The Fryer himself. I think he played for a bunch of different teams, too. And the bottom on the list was only 19. 19 was top five for a guy who threw 400-some touchdowns. Marcus. 420, exactly. I remember because it's, it's uh, also the marijuana day. There we go. Smoke it up, Dan. I will take uh, the, the big... Uh, Big rapist Ben Roethlisberger. The rapist Roethlisberger is number eight on this list. We know who's been doing that raping. Who's been doing it? Uh, Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown's number one, 58. Uh, Heath Miller. Heath Miller's number two, 41. Um, Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward! <laughs> That echoes throughout the thing. He's at number, he also has 41. Uh, San Antonio Holmes. S. San Antonio Holmes, yes. With 17, we're looking for number four. Uh, Plaxico Burris. Shoot, shoot, Burris, no. Okay. Sorry, I forgot he played for the Steelers. I just remember him for the Giants now. Uh, Mike Wallace. M. Wallace, DDS. Another sweep. Uh, I remember being so excited when the Dolphins signed Mike Wallace, and then it turned out that since when you're not any good, well, having fast receivers don't help you out a lot. Uh, same story, except with the Vikings and also Mike Wallace. And it <laughs> turns out Mike Wallace not good. So, Shot I'm, just happy I'm just happy I didn't guess Antoine Randall. L. Randall L. <laughs> How about Philip Rivers? P. Rivers. Kids, kids, you're kids. At, you're asking for it now. Mm, yeah. Is he even on the list? Yes, he is. Number six. Antonio <clears throat> Gates. A. Gates. Number uh, number one with 87 touchdowns. He's got a lot of touchdown passes. That Gates. Vincent Jackson. B. Jackson, uh, Northern Colorado's finest. 37. Malcolm Floyd on the list. 34. Oh, man. There's a little more obvious one that's not coming for me. I'll take a shot with another young guy, Keenan Allen, probably not right. Keenan Allen, I always draft him in fantasy football. He's number four at 21. Yeah. <coughs> Who else has been out there for a while? One more guy for old Calm Rivers. It may be worth uh, flipping it back over to the uh, Maryland game. Two-point game with 53 suck seconds it, left. Spartans, suck it, Spartans. As long as they cover the seven, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Don't fuck it up now, Merlin. Uh, Two guesses. Didn't Wes Welker play for Jersey for a while? I don't know. Wes Welker. Nope. One more? Uh, well, four of us have no idea. Was it? Eddie Royal. Mm. Eddie Royal with 16. Marcus has 12. David has 9. Charlie has 8. All right, I'm going to try one that has many options, but I'm, could also be tough because he played for so long. I'm sure we will get to the point where somebody will actually pick a wrong quarterback, so that could put uh, could do something uh, something with the points there. That's right. They would lose I, their thing. If you pick a wrong quarterback, do you does that count as one of your strikes and you get a guess again? No, it does not. <laughs> you only activate the mulligan when you get the first one right. Activate. Activate the glutes, Tyler. I like the language you use there. We activate it, I, uh, so cheat code. I will try uh, the Atlanta Falcons' own Brett Favre. F. Favre, number two on my list. Nobody threw more touchdowns than him except for the HGH man himself. <laughs> All right. There's a lot of guys this could be. A lot I'm of Favre guys. A lot of Favre guys. Antonio Freeman. A. Freeman, number one, with, 80, uh, with 57. I'm going to try Greg Jennings. Good guess. You would expect it, but no. Got to be awfully okay. close. I will try Donald Driver. Donald Driver's third with 36. Um, I wish I had that strike still left because <laughs> this is tougher now. Um, I'm torn between guessing a running back and a tight end right now. I'm going to, nah, I'm not going to guess a running back. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure he played with him for a while. And I don't think he was ever a one, a number one receiver. I'm going to try Robert Brooks. Bob Brooks, 32 touchdowns, number four. Uh, that opens it. That opens it. I, uh, uh, two left. I think uh, this guy got in trouble for sleeping with a babysitter or something. <laughs> Mark Chimura. Huh. Put him in jail. Someone I would have guessed, but not on the list. I believe these are two tight ends. One was definitely a tight end. Bubba, sure. Bubba Franks. Oh, man, I forgot all about Bubba Franks, but that makes sense. And Sterling Sharp. Sterling Sharp, yeah, that was that was before I even I forgot about Sterling Sharp because I was not watching football on TV then when he was still playing. The Sharp brother, you can understand, Marcus. I will uh, piggyback on that question, and I will go with Aaron Rodgers. Mmm. Yeah. You're welcome. You're mm. welcome. I've never thought of that. That is a very shrewd and uh, diabolical move, though. Aaron Rodgers on the list. Uh, Jordy Nelson. Number one, white to white. Greg Jennings. Number three, white to black. <laughs> James Jones. James Jones, also a black. Two to go. Top three are out. Randall Cobb. R. Cobb, Kentucky's best. Number four with 37. One more to go for a third straight sweep. Devontae Adams. D. Adams, no. Not black enough. <laughs> okay, then I'll go with uh, Donald Driver. Donald Driver for the win. If he Drax gets, is killing this game. He, he clearly has played Madden, every iteration of Madden for the last 15 years. For about, yeah, for about 10 years, I, I did get the game basically every year. If you get three sweeps, you get a, you get a second mulligan. Shot and Kirk. Eli Manning. Ooh, the shitty one himself. Yes, he's on the list. Uh, 
Plaxico Burris. P. Burris is number two with 33. Bang, bang. Bang. Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham. O. Beckham, number one on the list with 38. Maryland may not cover the 70. Fuck right? you, Maryland. <laughs> Victor Cruz. Number four with 25. Hakeem Nix, the big fucker, is fourth. For sweep. And again, we get to five, and I have literally no idea. Um, For the man who's going to give Joe Namath a run at the worst Hall of Fame quarterback ever, Eli Manning. <laughs> you got to respect it. Or Ken Stabler, one of the two. Uh, Jeremy Shockey, maybe? Mm, good guess, but no. Another guy I haven't thought about. Man, those tight ends really disappear into obscurity mm -hmm. quicker than some of these receivers. And they're all from Miami. They're all from Miami. Jeremy Shaq, you got a big mouth, too. You think he'd be around. That's right. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to eat at me when it's not coming to me. It's just... Uh... The over-under coming into play as well with this Michigan-Maryland game when you when you shoot 20 free throws in the last goddamn minute. <laughs> I'm giving up. I have no idea who is. Ruben Randall. Ah. Yeah, there. Ruben Randall, Schottenkirk 14, Marcus 15, 18, Charlie 11, as we're halfway done. We've reached the point where now it is less obvious of who I want to take at quarterback because there aren't as many obvious like well, I'll say this. choices. I will say this. The top nine have been taken. The yeah. top nine? In order, yes. Interesting. Man Manning, Manning, Favre, Marino, Rapist, Rogers, the Cum Guzzler, Rivers, Breeze, and Brady. So there are. Technically, uh, I think it's his wife as well, the Cum Guzzler. <laughs> the Cum Fountain himself. Yeah. Down no, five. No, let's five let's get those well. laps. Get those laps. I. Wait, how many quarterbacks is this? The 20. Top how many? 20, so there's 11 left. Top 20. Uh, I'll give you the number. Maybe. The number of the last guy is 247 touchdown passes. 247 and over since 19 since the merger. I think this guy might be on there. Play forever, no, no and this Marquette. Is, this Play is be funny because this was the first one I thought like, oh yeah, I could name multiple of these receivers, and it'd be funny if uh, he's not on the list himself. I will try uh, Southwest Lothario, Tony Romo. <laughs> How many touchdowns did I say was that number 20? Like 240 or something like that? 247. Romo had 248. Ooh. So just barely on the list. He's on the list. Tony Romo, 19th most touchdown passes since the merger. The merger. All right. I will try Des Bryant. Des Bryant, number one with 50. Also, number drops per game. Yes. I will try a uh, college quarterback who played NAIA football mm -hmm. with my cousin for a year, Patrick Creighton. Patrick Creighton, he's digging deep into the uh, into the ether. Yes, with 19, he's number five. Side note, I literally watched Patrick Creighton for Northwestern <laughs> Oklahoma State meet <laughs> Sioux Falls in Sioux Falls in the semifinals for an NAIA football game. Get fucked, Coops. It was like, oh, is this guy an NFL receiver? Well, he's definitely the best player on the field in this NAIA game. Do whatever you want. Uh, I will try a noted uh, soft-spoken receiver, Terrell Owens. Owens, 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 yes. Number three at 34. This seems to be the point with all of these guys where I can name two or three, and then it's like, well, I don't know who it is after that. Oh, I... Shit, now i got to think of the guy's name. Uh, Jason Witten. Jason Witten, number two with 37. Brunson. Oh, no, oh, we got a game, folks. We got a game. Run it down, Marquette. Waste some fucking time. Uh, one strike. Or, er, no strikes. And I only have one left. Foul. Oh, no call. Good call. Good no call. Play it out. Don't follow him. Play it out. Yet, uh, no, you have not gotten one wrong yet, I don't think. Nope. Let's one see. one guy to go. There's only one remaining. Two guesses with one to go. Um, Break their heart, Brunson. 
break. There was just a, there was just a seven minute and ten second touchdown drive in the Pro Bowl. Fuck you. Fuck you. Adam Thielen with a touchdown. Go to hell. Go to hell. I'm gonna I guess. Gotta, I gotta not wait for the NHL All Star game to start. All right. Since I have a throwaway guess, and also I'm struggling to think of other receivers, one of mine will be Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley. No. Oh, man. The spread again with Marquette Nova was, I believe, seven. Oh, man. Funny. Look out. Funny stuff. Nicole Beasley not on my list. Um, keep following, Marilyn. Just keep fucking see. following. I don't know. I'm struggling to think of anybody else. I think he played with Terry Glenn for a while, so I'll guess Terry Glenn. Miles Austin. Oh, oh man. I forgot about I forgot about Miles Austin completely. As did I. Miles Austin. Will Maryland cover? Yes, they will. Marcus. Um, I'll, I'll take John Elway. God damn it. That's twice, fucker. <laughs> Chief Elway. I thought about John Elway, and then I was like, well, I think I can name one. I don't know if I can name any other. This is going to be tough. But you I, would, but yeah. If you get this, I'll, I'll give you your own Clemson shirt if you get all <laughs> fucking five of these. Uh, Shannon Sharp. The... Uh, Googly Boogly, Sharp Brother, yes. <laughs> up to 20 points. Uh, Ed McCaffrey, the horse head himself. White to white, yes. Good luck, fucker. Good luck. Rod Smith? No! Damn it. Rod Smith is... Rod Smith would have been my first... Guess. I don't... I don't... How? I have no idea. I have no idea how. Unless it was uh, at the Mark tail end. Mark Jackson... Mark Jackson, yep. Yeah, now I don't have anybody else, I don't think. Um, I'm just going to say Terrell Davis, even though he's probably not on there. Nope. Uh, some guy named Anthony Miller. He can go to hell. And uh, Vance Johnson. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of either of those two guys. I grew up a big Vance Johnson fan, I can tell you that. The biggest. Doug, he loved him. Doug. Schottenkirk, a guy. Kind of in the territory. I'm trying to think of the quarterback that I know the most receivers to make the uh, bonus points here. Um, Joe Montana hasn't been said, right? Joe Montana has not been said. Joe Montana. Okay. Uh, I'll say Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Dwight Clark. One, two, the top two. Something called Freddie Solomon from the back of the good old days. F. Solomon, yep. And then after that, I'm running really low on ideas. So I'm going to forfeit the last two guesses just in the process. Roger Craig and, guess somebody. Roger Craig and John Taylor. Oh, man. Yeah. I've heard of both of them. I I Roger thought. Craig, one of the rare running backs probably on the list. Shot and, uh, shot and Kirk down by four. Charlie? Charlie's down by how many? 17. 11. You can make it all up right here. All right, I'm going to try. There's one on here. Bonus double points. One guy's got bonus double points. I'm going to try Terry Bradshaw. Not on the list. Well, Not on fast. the list. Here I was thinking, like, oh, I could just name all these Hall of Fame receivers, and I might get, like, two Swan, of them. Swan, Stallworth. Didn't even qualify in the first place. Tom Izzo, talk about the rapes. All right. Marcus, do you have anybody here? You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? I hope I'm not stealing... David Thunder here, but I'm going to take Carson oh, Palmer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, 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 ha I think I have all five, too, because I follow his career more closely than I'm willing to admit. But. I'm, uh, I'm willing to bet I won't get them all, so that makes it even better. Okay. That was the ace in the hole, so you just won. Uh, 
Chad Ochocinco. Nope, it's Chad Johnson. His name's Chad <laughs> Johnson. Number one, 45. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is number three. You know, 25 points. Uh, Hushman, Hushman Zada. Hushman <laughs> Would not be allowed in this country under this current administration. Number three. Number two. <laughs> Say Michael Floyd. Michael Floyd's on the list. Um, Still on State House. State House. David Johnson? Nope. Jermaine Gresham? David, do you know? No, because I thought it might have been Gresham. Chris Henry, RIP. <laughs> Good stuff. Shot and Kirk. Um, Getting down there now. Yeah, it really is. Quarterbacks are not uh, easy. <clears throat> and if you get them, good luck naming the fucking receivers. Phrase the question again. Has anybody said Matt Ryan yet or not? Nobody has said Matt Ryan. I'll say Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is the guy on the thing here. Julio, Roddy White. Yes. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Only list with two Hispanics on it, yes. Mohamed Sanu is probably a no, but I'll throw it out. Mohamed Sanu with nine. Oh, man. And then uh, if he's only got nine, how about uh, Devontae Freeman? Not him. Nope. Shit. Um, I'm trying to think of running back. Andre Risen. We're looking for Andre Risen. <laughs> I'm sure we are, yeah, yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah, I don't know. Jason Snelling. Okay, good. Never Didn't have a chance. Didn't have a chance. Fuck you, Snelling. <laughs> Fuck you. Charlie. All right. I'm going to hope I at least get a quarterback <laughs> right this time. I'm going to pick a guy who was in the league for a long, long time. Not always as a starter, famously. But I will try one. Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe, yes. All right, now the receivers, this is going to be hard to sell. I think I'm going to try Terry Glenn. Terry Glenn, count it, and the foul. <laughs> what number was he? He was number two with 31 touchdowns. Now I'm going to reach back to my Madden 64 days, pull out Ben Coates. Ben Coates, 41 or 45, nice. number one. Give me some of them coats. And now I'm like completely out of <laughs> of guys. I'm trying to think of just other guys he played with. Um, I don't remember who the Patriots receivers were when he got hurt and Tom Brady took over. I guess I'll try Dion Branch. Not on here. Um, for at least a little while, I think he played with Curtis Martin, so I'll say Curtis Martin. Good guess. Not on here. Uh, gentleman by the name of Sean Jefferson. Oh. Uh, some guy I never heard of called Vincent Brisby. Huh. Uh, I thought I would have. I was like, you know what? I might have heard of the next one more than the first one. And somehow I've heard of the second one even less. And I never heard of that other guy. You have heard of this next guy? He was a very good receiver. His name was Eric Moulds. Mm. Oh, wow. Eric Moulds. Let's get the. Uh, was good. Get the Hall of Fame campaign going for Eric Moulds. Marcus. Um, One, two, three, four, five. Five guys left? Yep. All right. I'm going to roll the dice because I know he's on the list. I say Warren Moon. Warren yeah, Moon. Who's old Moon? Are you kidding me? That's, that's literally four and three in a row that I'm going. Jesus Christ. You can't say you don't deserve it. 
I, I'm pretty sure I can get more receivers, and you're going to get two. So. I hope. I hope so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chris Carter. Chris Carter touchdowns. Twenty six. Uh, Hay- Haywood Jeffries. Haywood Jeffries. Uh, Maybe not pull that one out second. Here on zone. Haywood Jeffries. <laughs> uh, Ernest Gibbons. Oh my God. Gibbons, count it. I don't think I have any anybody else. E. Gibbons. E. Gibbons. Uh, Joey Galloway. Nope. Good guess. So close. Joey Gallusway, he was an ageless wonder, and he played for 19 years, things. getting better at the end of his career. Mm-hmm. So it's Got tough to gauge. Ishmael. No Ishmael. Ah, oh, shit. Trottenkirk, anybody? Uh, not that's coming to mind. Drew one Hill. year with Randy Moss, was ah. that enough? Drew Hill was number one with 43. Uh. A guy named Curtis Duncan had 19. Okay. Woof. Woof. David. Oh, man, I'm scrolling hardcore. Top uh, 12 are gone. Yeah, that's probably why I'm scrolling hardcore. Um, Four to go? Dave Craig, by chance? Dave Craig's on the list at 15. Who was old Craig throwing to? I said that is because Steve Largen has to be one, I would assume. Steve Largen is there. Um, Good luck with the rest. That, my God. I will say this is definitely a top uh, three or five trivia question of all time because Perfect. shit's good. <laughs> In about 10 seconds, I'm going to probably forfeit. Yeah, there's probably one I should get, but I have no fucking idea. Ricky Prohl. Yep. Mm. Uh, you done? Yeah. You done? Daryl Turner, Brian Blades, John Williams, Ray Butler. <laughs> Just a host of random, random, randomly named fuckers. Charlie, three to go. I will try the other great Minnesota Vikings quarterback. Donovan McNabb. Ooh. <laughs> Not on the list. I would assume he had to be pretty close. Burn. I'm the only guy who's picked anyone to not be on the list, and I've done it twice. I don't think that'll be the last, because there's a couple of obscure fuckers here. Donovan McNabb, 247 is what he needed. He, I bet he had at least 230. He had 234. So your whole career, McNabb, not quite good enough. Not quite good enough. Marcus? This is a total guess because I don't know how many of his touchdowns were pre-merger, post-merger. Maybe it was during the merger. Brian Tarkington? Nope. Okay. Shot and Kirk with a chance. Uh, Benny Testaverde? Testaverde on the list. Side note, I was torn between guessing earlier between Drew Bledsoe, Benny Testaverde, and Donovan McNabb. <sighs> or not, I should have picked Testaverde. Schottenkirk is down five. Could he do it? Could yeah, he do know. it? This is the last go around, too, huh? Testaverde. We'll keep going until we have no more. There's two guys left. If you get bo- if you get the two remaining guys, and if you get one or two each time, you could have a tie. Uh, something called Mike Carrier, ringing a bell from the early nineties. What was his name? Mark Carrier. What was his name? Whose name? What's your guess? Hello? Mark Carrier. Yes. Okay. That's old school football game from way back beyond the uh, Number two at 25. Uh, played so many damn different places, it's almost impossible to. 
Yeah, I'll take my chance that I can get the quarterback. Are you done? <sighs> yep. Michael Jackson was one. Wayne Corbett. Wayne Corbett was five at 15. Derek Alexander. And some guy named Bruce Hill. Yeah, hmm. I should have got Wayne Corbett, but still. So Wayne Corbett was on the list, but Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson. Was not. <laughs> Throw me the damn ball! He said, fuck you. Schottenkirk is down. One, two, three, by what, four? Charlie. Two guys. I should have been using this whole off time trying to think of another quarterback. <laughs> um, I will. Two guys. Let's see. Number 17 and number 20. You've got number 18 and number 19. I'm trying now. I'm trying to remember, like even though touchdown passes are different than passing yards, mm. I'm trying to think of Sporkle days. Uh, or just like what were names that were frequently listed whenever I do quarterback ones. Um, let's see, because I would assume there's someone I'm glossing over that. I can tell you how this is going to end already. Not to interrupt. Marcus is going to take the next quarterback that I have receivers for to make it interesting, but he's going to steal. I'm looking forward to it. I'm just going to squat on the good quarterbacks. Um, I'm going to, I don't know, Boomer Asaya said. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Can I change my mind and not guess him and guess somebody else? If you want to. No Boomer Esiason, which is going to be hilarious if he's on the list and this guy I change it to isn't on. Scratch him. I'm going Buffalo Bills' Jim Kelly. Not on the list. Burn. Were either of them on the list? Marcus can close it up. With oh, yeah, that's true. I guess yeah, you can. Fair Marcus? Uh, Dan Fouts? D. Fouts on the list. Give me some Fouts. Uh, Kellen Winslow. Yep. He's a... Charlie Joyner. Yep. That's probably it. Uh, uh, other uh, illuminaries, John Jefferson, Wes Chandler, and some guy named Eric Seavers. Cool. One guy's on the list. He is number 20. He has 247 touchdowns. David Schottenkirk, do you know who this is? Yeah, I do, but I have no idea about the receivers. It's got to be Sonny Jurgensen. It is not. Really? Charlie, you get a crack to end it. So, uh, didn't Sonny Jurgensen play in the 50s? No, he played right before the He played after the merger, too, though. Oh, that's why. All right, got it. You're, you're right. You're right. I bet. Charlie? Um, I guess I'll go with Boomer as I said. Yes. <laughs> He is one of them. Right. He's, yep. You got number 18, um, 19, and 20. God, I don't know if I can name a single guy. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I take it back. Now I'm blanking on his name. Who's, fuck, what's the name of the guy who does the broadcast without <laughs> Michaels and owns Pro Football Focus? Come on, Charlie. It's uh, Chris Collinsworth. You got it. On the button, number five with 17. Jeez, Collins. Only 17. <laughs> I don't know if I can. I, to be honest, other than Chad Johnson and A.J. Green, I don't know if I can name any other Bengals receivers, period, off the top of my head right now mm -mm. in history. So, um, DJ wait, Rashad. hold on, hold on. There was a guy. I don't know, maybe he didn't play for the Bengals. I'm going to. The guy that did the icky shuffle, I'm going to guess uh, Woods. Nope, icky no Woods. Woods or whatever. Were we were not hard on Woods. Yeah, I, I got nothing else. Some guy named Eddie Brown, Rodney Holman, Tim McGee, and James Brooks. Whoever the fuck those guys would happen to be. Final tally, Charlie with 21. Boom, drinking age. <laughs> Shot and Kirk with 27. 34 for the dentist. 
should have been a pretty good indicator he was going to win after he uh, ran out the first two or three. If somebody can guess the quarterback I'm thinking of, you win the game. <laughs> you need to get two guesses. In no particular order. Austin Sumner. No. <laughs> Tavares Jackson. Nope. Joe Webb. Nope. Jamal Lord. Nope. Eric Crowd. Nope. <laughs> to win the game, Marcus. Uh, Whoever he says is going to be right, they're going to be. Curtis Painter. Jeff Blake. <laughs> Jeff Blake, folks. Oh, it was another Bengals quarterback. That's right. Oh, Jeff Blake, yeah. <laughs> Jeff Blake, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hold on, you were thinking of the Jeff Blake? <laughs> yep. That's a good pick. Good pick. Marcus, Super Bowl pick. What you got? Your final one. Uh, Patriots, 27, Eagles, 17. The MVP. Tom Brady. David? Um, Patriots, 34, Eagles, 23. Brady? Rex Burkhead. I'm gonna go. James Harrison. I'm gonna go Deion Lewis as a little change. Deion Lewis, Charlie. I uh, I'm gonna go that it's the first non or the first Belichick Brady Super Bowl that's it's not, not really entertaining, and I will say uh, New England 38, Philadelphia 21. Whoa. I will go. Rod Gronkowski is MVP. Mm. We say it every year, but we're due for a bad one. Uh, Seattle Broncos. That was a bad one. That was a bad one. Forty-three. Uh, Panthers Broncos was it great? Pretty boring. It was poop. Uh, twenty-four twenty. New England. Brady wins it. Uh, New England wins on two safeties. <laughs> I like it. Well, before, before Broncos and Seahawks, or I should say Seahawks and Broncos. Cause what the was Seahawks the last one that was bad? Them. Yeah, when was the last one before that that was bad? Steelers-Packers was okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it was bad. Uh, Tampa Bay-Oakland was the shits. Uh, Seattle. I think there was a long stretch between Tampa good. Bay, Oakland, and those ones were like there were some that weren't were like really good. Seattle, but Pittsburgh, like, they weren't bad either. Like Steelers, Seahawks is kind yeah, of boring. Like a game. Steelers, Steelers, Seahawks was boring, but it was still like it was still close midway through the third quarter. Yeah, yeah we we've done very well. Yeah, the eighties had like no close ones outside of Bengals, Niners twice. I think the end of the 90s, there were some close ones, but like the early 90s, I guess other than that Buffalo, Dallas. New York one, killing were just like all bloodbaths. Not great. Super Bowl 52. Marcus, what are you looking forward to seeing in Minneapolis? Um, Want to see I'm the ice sculptures? That, I'm just excited that uh, my favorite team is hosting the game, even if the Vikings aren't in it. Um, I'd be more excited if my favorite team was in the fucking game. I agree, but they're not, and there's nothing I can do about that now. So I kind of got put it on the ballot. Got. Initiated measure sixty-nine. What's that? Initiated measure sixty-nine. Get the signatures. Nice, nice. Get it to Krebs. Um, I would say uh, it looks like Friday. I might be able to get up there and check it out. Sean and Kirk are probably going to join me, uh, so I'm excited to see what what they got set up. It's apparently. Uh, Pretty cool. My parents were there yesterday looking mm. at it. So, um, yeah, I'm eager to, to check it out a little bit. John Kirk, you're gonna uh, give my best to Dan Patrick. Who? Dan Patrick. Well, we're not gonna be able to do it. Jack God. Got close, close set, yeah. Fuckers. Bullshit. Where's it gonna be at? He's right across in some high rise, overlooking stadium. Oh, really? Oh, that's it's shit. actually pretty badass. Uh, Very exciting. Very exciting. Any uh, 
Any Royal Rumble pick for you? Royal Rumble pick? I think we both agree it's going to be the Japanese fucker. <laughs> I believe we are. I've been very... If it's not him, I'd be surprised if it wasn't somebody else that's on SmackDown. Uh, Undertaker probably going to be in this thing? Uh, I'm not as convinced as a lot of other people are, but... <clears throat> Any, any, I mean, there's been years where there, be, there have been surprises. There's been years where there haven't been any, any surprises here. Um, I want to give it the big one, Lesnar. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. <laughs> well, what's, what's the big one? Well, the biggest one is Young Punk. Oh, fuck. Right, that's not happening. No. But just in case that it did, in Philly, you can help. I'm very excited. Wait, who? CM Punk. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. Well, uh, I, I mean, the women's it's shock back is kind of not there. It just might not show up. I'm very much not looking forward to this women's Royal Rumble, for Christ's sakes. Well, I mean, it, you, you almost have to think that Rouse has got to be a part of it. They, they went through it. She was at Mania a couple years ago. She's got to be involved, and there's a lot of people that are thinking that she might not even be involved. And then I would be kind of pissed about the situation, too. She'll be there at some point. I don't, if it's tonight, that'd be nice, but, you know. I, I, I guess the only other thing that might potentially be happening is that I think Hogan's going to come back to his cameo pretty soon. He's very excited. He might show up in some, like, backstage bullshit tonight mm -hmm. or whatever. That'd be fun. Is the Women's Royal Rumble doing the same thing where the, the yeah. winner gets a shot at WrestleMania at the title. Yeah. yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. Charlie, how, your, your wrestling history, did you did you like the Royal Rumble? Uh, I did. I think it was maybe one Number of the most interesting really exciting. events just because it was it was different. I mean, like, WrestleMania is the best pay-per-view, but usually those are, like, standard matches that are just, like, the end of long-running feuds. Well, the Royal Rumble was different, I guess, uh, when they would do, like, tables, ladders, chairs, or elimination chamber. I thought those ones were fun. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I just liked it when they were they were doing something different, especially if it's like, this is the mm -hmm. only time we're going to do it all year. Oh. As opposed to, you know, like, like, cage matches are neat, but they do, for a while, they did those all the time. That's correct. Royal Rumble tonight. Any final thoughts? Nope. Uh, Texas was not back this week, so that's the first time I think that has ever happened. So before we uh, before that is fucked up, we'll we will bid you adieu. I'm sure uh, we'll have a uh, post Super Bowl edition right after the Super Bowl and do all that bullshit again. So Charlie Hildebrand, Marcus Raxer, David Schotten, Kirk and Stackens kid. NC State, good win yesterday, beating Carolina. Uh, we'll see ya. It'll be Lounge 240. It'll be Super Bowl 52.